Today, I'm gonna to tell you the top 10 yielding dividends in the S&P 500. I'm Zeke, and welcome to the Dream Green Show. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Dream Green Show. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the top 10 yielding dividends that's in the S&P 500 not just the top 10 performing um, companies that's in the in the s p 500 or the best performing dividend companies that's in the s p 500 but i'm just going to specifically be talking about the top 10 yielding dividends which ones have the highest yield that's in the s p 500. And i'm going to list all 10 of them starting from one through 10 so you want to stick all the way to the end of the video so you guys can figure out which ones do you want to invest in this year in 2020. But before we get into those top 10, what is the S&P 500? The S&P 500 is the index of 500 companies, large cap companies. It's 500 US exchange companies and it tracks the performance of these stocks. It's considered to many to be one of the best representations of the US stock market. The average annual return of this index is 9.2% a year, all the way from 1926. So basically that is what the S&P 500 is. It's 500 companies, large cap companies that, that pretty much shows how the US stock market is represented, okay? So these companies do have a pretty big name to them. So it won't be any penny stocks in, inside the S&P 500. Some of these stocks pays dividends, some of these stocks are growth stocks. But today, here goes the top 10 highest yielding dividends that's inside the S&P 500. In the first one we have here is Maturance. It's coming in at a whopping 9.0% dividend yield. This is the top yielding um, stock that is in the S&P 500. Uh, typical symbol MAC. Maturance is a mall REIT. It specializes in town squares with major flagship stores, preferably in higher income areas. It has 51 million square feet of gross leisurable area across 52 properties, so that the typical property is close to a million square feet. Think about the size of around 500 houses. An example of one of these properties is Eastland Mall in Innsville, India. It's right around a million square feet with over 100 stores, including uh, JCPenney's, Dillard's, and Macy's. One thing that investors should keep in mind is what comes when you buy REIT, including that they have to pay 90% of their taxable income as dividends to receive special tax status. That means uh, merchants have to pay out 90% of their taxable income to, um, to pay out their dividends so they could uh, receive their special tax status. In addition, brick and mortar retailers closures or, bankrupt or bankruptcies and higher interest rates could negatively affect uh, merchants. So that's the number one um, highest yielding stock that is in the S&P 500 by dividend yields. Not the best company in the S&P 500, but it's the highest yielding stock. Number two would be CenturyLink, ticker symbol CTL. Um, it comes in right under 9% at 8.6% dividend yield. CenturyLink is a major US telecom that grew over the past decade with acquisitions including QS and Level 3 Communications. It serves both businesses and residential customers. The combination of a leveraged balance sheet, i.e high debt levels and revenue growth challenges in areas like landline voices and have seen a stock price fall fairly steadily in the past few years. It's around a quarter of where it was five years ago. So like I was saying earlier, just because they're the, the highest yielding dividend stocks in the S&P 500 doesn't make them the best growth stocks in the S&P 500, but it do have a whopping dividend yield of 8.6% that you know that you're gonna receive every dividend payment. If, you, uh, if you're a dividend investor, these top stocks in the S&P 500 might be a good look for you. All right. Coming in at number three is Iron Mountain, a little bit under 8%. This one is coming in at 7.9%. 
Iron Mountain. Iron Mountain services are less well known than many other names on this list, but over 90% of the Fortune 1000 uses Iron Mountain. As Iron Mountain puts it, the company focuses on strong, protecting, and managing information and assets. For the most part, that means shredding documents or storing documents, but it also gets its data into storage and can even brag about storing <laughs> Frank Sonata's master's recording. Wow. <laughs> so they, they, they store Frank Sonata, uh, Sinatra's master recording. Uh, just like um, Merchant's Iron Mountain is also a REIT. Coming in at number four, Macy's coming in at a whopping 7%, 7.0%. Macy's has 800 plus brick and mortar locations under its namesake brand, Bloomingsdale, and specialty stores like Blooming Curry. Despite efforts by management like to make Macy's omni-channel, basically what they're saying is they're trying to make it grow online sales. Its trailing 12 months revenue is lower today than it was in 2007. That said, Macy's is still profitable and is being proactive about making asset sales and making the most of the real estate holdings. When dealing with a business facing industrial decline, the last thing you want is management that bury its heads in the sand. Bulls can take heart that Macy's management appear proactive and is working with a profit that results in a low P.E. ratio and a nice size dividend. So everyone know the online market is becoming very, very big and these brick and mortar stores are taking a big hit. But Macy's is also trying to sell a lot of their stuff online and they're adapting to that situation, even though that they have been on the decline the last couple of years. Coming in at number five would be Altria. Marlboro cigarettes maker Altria has been a unbelievable great dividend stock over the last decade. Today, it faces continuing lower volume as the health effects of tobacco and smoking dissuade more and more people. Yes, its dollar sales has been fairly steady over the past few years since addictive products have strong pricing power. Altria has also bought itself opportunity with large stakes in e-cigarettes producer Juul and cannabis companies Kronos. That especially true when you consider that Altria's brand power in this in distribution network can do to boost those operations. Coming in at number six with a dividend yield of 6.3% is Occidental Petroleum. Occidental has made many headlines for its pending $38 billion acquisition of Andarco Petroleum. It's a big bet. Notice that it's roughly the size of Occidental market cap and one it had to outbid Chevron for about $5 billion to win. It's also been complicated and messy. To afford the deal, Occidental needed $10 billion in financing from Warren Buffett, Birkenshire Hathaway, and, and a side deal with Total to sell $8.8 .8 billion of Accardo assets. It's likely both Birkenshire and Total got good deals from a motivated Occidental. Meanwhile, activists, investors, and Occidental shareholders, Carl Achan has been complaining and looking to boost its influence on the board of directors. On the organic side, Occidental has been lowering its cost structures to the point that it thinks it could fund its non-Arcardo operations and pay its dividends of OU averages only $40 per barrel. Even if we assume these estimates are accurate, in acquisitions, this large can have many hard to predict effects, both positive and negative. Coming in at number seven, Nielsen, with a dividend yield of 6.3%. Although well known for its self named TV ratings and other audience measurements, Nielsen have problems growing its top line in recent years. With its share price already sliding from a couple of years, last summer, Nelson announced it was seeking strategic options. In other words, it's been open to selling parts of itself or the whole enchilada. Potential investors, especially those looking to buy and hold a high yield for years, should factor in all of these uncertainties into their decision making. In 
Coming in at number eight, one of my favorite companies on this list, one of my favorite companies in the S&P 500, it would be AT&T. It has a high dividend yield of 6.2%. Like CenturyLink, AT&T is a major telecom that makes this top 10 dividend list. However, unlike CenturyLink, AT&T is, is quite profitable and seemingly stable. It has both mobile and land operations as well as acquisitions to DirecTV in 2015, and more recently, Time Warner, when, <laughs> which is now <laughs> Warner Media. With both content and distributions in hand, AT&T promises to be a formidable player no matter how things shake out. Coming in at number nine is AbbVie with a dividend yield of 6.1%. AbbVie is yet another company in the middle of an M&A event. It recently announced its agreement to buy fellow drug market Algren for about $63 billion. The combination will diversify AbbVie sales. Currently, more than half of adjusted sales come from an anti-inflammatory treatment, Humarin, the world's number one drug in 2018. However, Humor and Botox, Allegren's top seller, face fortune competitive while a patent cliff or a potential superior alternative, respectively. Someone could consider AbbVie stock should think through both the effects of the massive combination of the long-term valuability of AbbVie's combined portfolio and pipeline. And number 10 would be Invesco, coming in with a 6.1%. Invesco is an asset manager with over $1 trillion in assets under management. Its well-known funds include variations of its Invesco branding, as well as its recently acquired Oprah Henry funds. Profitability has been a strong suit for Invesco over the years. It's been consistent with strong profit margins currently 15%. On the flip side, outside of the acquisitions, revenue growth can be a challenge, especially as a competition with the asset management industry and increasing consumer awareness drives fees lower. That is an Invesco coming in at a 6.1% dividend yield. And there you go, guys. That is the top 10. My favorite would probably be AT&T, and I might look into one of those REITs so I could get uh, some of those dividend payments added into my Robinhood portfolio. I use the Robinhood portfolio. The link is down in the subscription. If you sign up, I get a free stock and you get a free stock. And just leave a comment down in the comment section on what free stock that you receive. You can receive all the way up to like an Apple stock, a $500 stock. But be warned that not all of those companies that have those super high dividends are great investments for the long term. I'm going to stick with at and t It's already in my portfolio and I'm planning on buying more in the future. If you want to keep up with my portfolio, just go down, hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button so you can see how I grow my portfolio in the future. But other than that, I'm Zeke bringing you the Dream Green Show and I'm out. Peace.